essentially just, uh, as I said, it was it was a sitcom, it was yeah. like dealing in types, and uh, and presenting a story that yeah. would be it's familiar, very familiar. Yeah. You know, that trying to set up the, the the kid, the guy with a with a wife, and you know, and and then thrown into the mix was the fact that he was gay and he was he was living with his best friend who. It was all. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm a little bit interested because we've heard um, something from you, John, and from you, David, that I, I think maybe everyone would echo that what people want to see is themselves. Mm -hmm. The people want to, children want to see other children on stage and ethnic audiences want to see their ethnicity represented. Um, which kind of leads me to the question, um, what changes first, the audience or the work? Well, and this is in terms of both, um, do we see ourselves on stage so we come? Or does the theater see us coming so they put us on stage? And um, similarly, if I can pack 60 questions into this question, David also talked about the changing of Canadian creation. Um, in general, I guess my, my broad question is what changed first, the work or the audience? Or what is changing first, the work or the audience? Well, actually, if I can jump in here, is that um, I'm, in, I'm right now I'm in a discussion uh, with the Toronto Arts Council to uh, pilot a five-year project uh, to help increase the diversity of audiences uh, throughout Toronto, um, and this is again based on the work that I did at Factory Theatre, whereby we had created these events that targeted several different communities and the marketing campaigns for each of these communities would be very specific to them um, surrounding the run of a play. Um, an example of this uh, would be for um, Chekhov's Heartache um, that was playing with uh, Theatre Smith Gilmore. They were at uh, Factory Theater. It was a remount. We knew that they, we knew that there were several problems. Was that the Russian community wasn't coming to see it, and that there was a remount. So we had to figure out well, how are we going to save their uh, their houses? So I created a festival where we I worked with um, a an art school that taught Russian youth in Toronto how to paint in the traditional form, and I had them interpret the work of Chekhov, just the way Theatre Smith Gilmore does it, but in painting and had it up on the walls uh, for the run of the show. And it was a way of drawing in the Russian culture in its many different forms, uh, coming, because it, it does have several, it, it, what after you know doing my research with them, it seemed that they all had very specific sex within the Russian community. Um, I wanted to draw them in basically on the Russian youth. It seemed to work um, pretty well. Uh, we had several other um, festivals just like that. But what the problem was is that we weren't able to follow up with these communities. For example, that if I was to, if after all of this work that I did with the Russian community, um, Factory Theatre only does so many yeah. Russian-based <laughs> plays, right? The same problem happened, um, and, and Claire Hopkins can, uh, can talk about this as well, is that uh, when she was doing uh, work with uh, Tapestry for the Iron Road, there was a lot of work and man hours put in to figure out how can we target the Chinese community to see this play, this opera, about, um, about the railroad, the making of the railroad. And it was great. There was um, a lot of uh, buzz within the Chinese community, but then psh, gone. If I was able to get that information from them, I would have been able to really I, was, I would be able to sort of stand on their shoulders for when I was going to be doing the outreach work for Banana Boys, which was based on the, again, it was a Chinese community play about um, five uh, Chinese men at the um, University of Waterloo. So what I would like to do is create this e-share yeah, e network where all outreach professionals throughout Toronto would be able to constantly share information about communities that they're dealing with and to be constantly engaging them in theatre. Um, now, when part of this, though, is that it's not necessarily just bringing them in so that they can see, uh, they can go to events like ancillary events that will attract them to consistently engage them. If we were to get all um, theaters uh, as part of this um, outreach initiative, part of it is also to tell them that you're going to increase the diversity of audiences, yes, 
but in order to consistently engage them, they have to be able to see themselves on stage. Um, so myself as an artist of color, not just an outreach professional, I would, be able, I, I would want to do, create this initiative specifically so work such as mine, such as people from Fujian or from Obsidian would be able to see their work more on stage and see it uh, more prominent within the theater community. It's because they want, uh, because I would like, I would love theater companies to see diverse audiences as an opportunity. I, I would love for them to see it as more of, an, uh, of a priority. By, if they see them more in the audiences, then they would see it as a priority to, to have a more diverse season. That's, that's why it's a five-year project. It's not necessarily just within one year we're going to see whether or not it's going to work. It would be a five-year project to see how it affects um, theater companies in the city and how it affects the, the audiences that come to see their work. But we also don't, I mean, like, I keep going, are we doing niche theater then? Are we, do, are we dependent on, like, <laughs> You know, now here's the Russian play for the Russian community. Now here's the well, Chinese play for the Chinese community. Yeah. Now, like, where's the crossover? Because, like, I can't do that. I yeah. don't have, there isn't, an, and, and I, you know, I work, I'm working from a different place, which is, like, we have the right to be heard and seen mm -hmm. as the first people of this country. And we have the right to do that in this, in this place, in this, my church, in this, yeah. in this form. And, and I, and I, I've been spending a lot of my career fighting the dim sum slot or the bannock slot or the, you know, the curry slot, whatever, like that kind yeah. of programming, right? Well, there's, you know, there's a specific way of doing it. For example, when we worked on For the Place Between, which is the play that Native Earth just did, we had created, um, <laughs> we had created a, a burning board where people could fill out slips um, that said, how have you been burned? And people would fill it out, you know, like, um, you know, my, my husband stinks or whatever, and uh, he doesn't do the dishes. And they'd put it onto the burning board, and then we burnt at the Native Women's um, Resource Center afterwards. Thing is, although this is, um, it, it would be like a, a, a Native esque ritual of burning in order to free people, it wasn't necessarily a Native ritual. Everyone's been pissed off in some way. Everyone can think of something, no matter how minute. And so it created an intercultural bridge. It's very specific. Whereas if I was to, for example, make it into its, uh, if it was more along the lines of very specific and native, that's for the native community, and only the native community is going to be um, invited, that's a very different voice. Another example is with St. Gil, with my play. When I was doing outreach for my own fucking play, um, we, um, yeah, I know that's <laughs> small budgets. Um, what I wanted was that when people were going to be watching St. Gil, which was, uh, it's based on this very dangerous, daring dance. Like, I know that people watch it like this every time they see this, this dance, because it, it is, it's very dangerous. I wanted to make sure that everyone in the audience would feel <coughs> how that, f would know how it feels <laughs> like to do this dangerous dance. So we had two nights during, during the run of, the, of um, the show where people got to try it out. I was, I was crossing myself, hoping, hoping to God that somebody wasn't going to die. And uh, people loved it. People absolutely loved it because it was an intercultural bridge. It was, it's not necessarily feel how it's like to be Filipino or this is just for the Filipino community. It's feel how it is to to sense danger. What does it feel like? Which is the overall theme of the play, which is to go into this very dangerous place, which is forgiveness. And that's mirrored in the dance. How does it feel to walk through this bamboo as it's closing in on your ankles? How does it feel like to take a risk? And that is an intercultural bridge. That, that can go, anybody can feel, even children learning how to walk would know what that, fe what, would want to understand what that feels like. Um, and so that's why, I mean, when it comes to these outreach events, it's, you know, it's very careful. You have to be very careful as to what kind, like you have to think big, like what is the event that we're trying to do? Who are we trying to attract? And how many different kinds of ways can we attract these people? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a difference between, you know, it's, it's a fortune cookie or something. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Fujian could do, do something like that, whereas 
instead we want to create something like that's much more intercultural where themes are much more universal that people can connect to. Can I just really quickly get the opinion of the gentleman in the middle? If, <laughs> if we build it, they will come, or if we come, they will build it for us? John. Uh, if we build it, they will come. No one's going to go anywhere. What will no get the diverse audiences in? Doing the work that reflects them, or just doing the work, getting them in, and then giving them, giving them a bit of them? Uh, well, the work has to come through, but I, I think if, if you're trying to do work to appeal to a particular audience, you may be disappointed mm -hmm. uh, in that, you know, just because it's about them doesn't mean that they're going to like it or they're going to come. It has to work on its own. Right. And there has to be something there for people to, for the audience to take. Um, so uh, in, 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 in that way, I, I agree with you about this sort of niche programming where you try to do this show for this community and you know you know no that that I don't think that works I don't you know um, generally you have to put on shows that it would appeal to almost everyone but you know within that almost everyone there would be segments that may be easier to attract than than other segments of, of, of the audience but the show has to has to work on its own and on its own merits. I would say audiences do like to see themselves on stage. Um, <clears throat> I remember performing in a, a predominantly um, a Chinese school in Scarborough and uh, the three actors uh, uh, that were, uh, there was a, a, a three actors came on and then Kira Lochran came around the corner and the girls just sat up and paid attention to her. They said, okay, there's an actress who looks like me, somewhat like me, and enough like me, holy mackerel. No, they just really, they, there was something very electric. So we try and, and cast um, because our audience, when we, a school audience is the most democratic audience in the world because everybody's there. Everybody of all economies is there. Uh, the brain surgeon and the garbage collector, the future, everybody's there. All the cultures are there. <clears throat> so we have to, we feel we have to try and reflect that. We're not doing it because we're really better than anyone else or holy or we're not doing it. We're doing it because the, the audience likes it. They get to see themselves up there. They just like it. So do you create stories with that in mind or do the stories just create themselves organically and... That's the question, is it not? Is that not what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you purposely show them themselves, or is that just how it's happening? I guess we're doing both, in a sense that we would, we would certainly do a play that was all black, or we're currently doing a play in which uh, all the actors are First Nations actors. Um, but I think what I but, but are you, are you doing that because you like you like the story or because oh let's do a, a First Nations play? Oh, uh, well you know the the Mohawks just shut down the railroad between Montreal and Toronto, mm -hmm. so doing a First Nations play seems to have some kind of relevance. But now I do like the story and all those things factor in. You know you can't be too political about it. You have to have a story that's going to really uh, connect. Um, so uh, uh, where we, I, I don't know, you know we, it used to be all white theater in the 70s and the 80s. It was like a white theater. Uh, uh, but we were exploring... Um, <laughs> yes, the, with white, there, there were certain segments, I guess. <laughs> Mostly. I remember seeing a show at Toronto Free Theater when that existed. What was it about? It was about the Ukrainian community out in... Well, that's not white. <laughs> no, no, no. That's white, but it was about a, you know, it was about Simbali? Simbali? prairie wheat, prairie, prairie wheat. wheat, prairie wheat, prairie wheat. Oh, Ukrainian. <laughs> you know, so oh, that's really so, so when you going say out on a limb. when you say white, my, my first inclination is Anglo, yeah. but that's not what you meant. Well, uh, you know the. I know what you mean. I, I there was just there was just a lot of and then 
for whatever reason. Uh, I remember, I remember you couldn't, you couldn't buy, they couldn't sell tickets to the International Theatre Festival. The International Theatre Festival could not sell tickets. There was no one interested in going. Everybody wanted to see a Canadian play. That was just what was going on. And then all of a sudden, pe 